Morning all, how's it going? There's a few things got on my tits today. The first thing I want to do though is try and make a sterling defence of the Karen. Now, we all fucking hate Karen. It's definitely not a politically partisan thing, right? The sort of, for those that don't know the meme, um, the general feeling about it is, according to Know Your Meme, is that Karen's a slang term used as an antagonistic female character in memes. Uh, it's generally characterised as an irritating, entitled woman, sometimes an ex-wife who took custody of the kids. <laughs> the left have sort of tried to appropriate it and make it as if it's all about Karen being racist, like, oh, she's she's being a bigot in, you know, Starbucks and having to go at some poor, disenfranchised black chap who's unfortunate enough to have drawn her ire. But that's not exactly right. It's generally just a term for a fucking annoying, entitled woman. I, and I do understand that whenever I've been in a pub or a restaurant and someone's been fucking needlessly kicking off because they didn't have the sauce she liked or there was a wayward pube in her food. <laughs> um, now, obviously, I'm not into pubes <laughs> in my food. Pubes aren't my favourite thing to dine upon. Um, although I would rather have a pube sandwich than read a Knowing Jones article in The Guardian. But um, they do kick off in a way that's needlessly aggressive. Like, if I fucking go to a restaurant and the food's shite, being typically two-faced in English, I don't want to cause a massive fuss and kick off. So usually, I will just go, it's a bit shit in here. Tell them it was all right. And I even still tip them for two reasons. First of all, the poor cunt that brings your food over is never the one that cooked the fucking thing. They're always the minimum wage waitress. Um, so I always feel bad whinging you know? at him. Like, if, if the chef himself came out and said, how was it? Maybe I'd attack him and say, it was shite, mate. But it's always the poor old server, and I feel bad for the waitresses and the waiters. So I never say much. I go, yeah, it's fine. I'll be tersely polite, and then I'll tip them properly, and I'll leave, and I'll never go back ever again. That's basically what I do if somewhere's shit. Karen's don't. Karen's go ape shit, usually at the fucking waiter, waiter or the waitress, and then the manager when he gets involved, and it's just embarrassing. And I will concede that whenever I've seen anyone needlessly overreact, it is a Karen, or, caveat, or foreign. <laughs> that sounds terribly, terribly racist or prejudiced. But in England, I did see, like, a Middle Eastern bloke or mental. There was like, you know, the manager was talking to one of the girls and they were having a bit of a laugh and a joke where it wasn't busy in a bakery. And then this fucking Middle Eastern looking dude went mental and said like, you two sluts, you're not, you're acting like you're in a bar talking nonsense while I'm waiting for my food or whatever. Like he went mental. Uh, and I think that's just a cultural difference. Like, you know, I'm sure in Saudi Arabia, the, uh, <laughs> The staff are a lot more differential than they are in London. But um, yeah, one of the two. It's very rarely just some random, you know, tw young local lad who's needlessly pissed off and feels like it's a good idea to harass the waitress. So um, yeah, the Karen thing, I think it's got some truth to it. And they all do, don't they? Stereotypes always do. Always. Now, obviously, no one thinks all stereotypes are true. But if they were completely fictional, they wouldn't take off. If I just made some shit up, and said like, I don't know, what do people say? People say the British have bad teeth, right? They fucking do. I can even give you five good reasons why the British have got bad teeth. Because I've thought about this. I've got pretty good teeth. You've all seen them. But a large, a larger percentage of British people have bad teeth compared to a percentage of American people. A similar percentage of Americans. They definitely do. If you go in my local pub in Middlesbrough, it is fucking unbelievable. There are more feet than teeth at the bar. Because there's lots of drunks in the UK and drunks don't brush their teeth twice a day. They don't floss when they come home after 15 pints of bitter. <laughs> yeah, they don't break the Listerine out in their electric fucking toothbrush and make sure they practice good oral hygiene <laughs> shortly before they collapse in the gutter and shit themselves. It's just not something that happens. So it's logical that British people have got worse teeth than Americans. Not all of them. But that's the definition of a stereotype, isn't it? A few more reasons I've hypothesised. We fight a lot more, right? I've got two chips, two chip teeth in my mouth. Most of them are in good nick, you've seen them all. My, I've got good teeth. But I have been kicked in the mouth several times and punched in the face many times. Um, usually whilst drunk and 
getting into a heated debate with another drunk person and as a result chipped teeth so the british drink a lot more fight a lot more because nobody carries a fucking pistol in england and nobody gets sued so there's numerous reasons why the british have worse teeth than the americans drink more fight more no lawsuits no fear of death in some fisticuffs in the pub uh there's four good reasons uh, fifth reason is the NHS, right? Because the Americans uh, out here, your dentist's constantly pestering you. Come and see me, come and see me. They actually fucking phone you because I'm paying for my health insurance and they get a shit ton of money if they do dental work on me. So unlike in England where your dentist really doesn't give a fuck if you turn up or not, out here they actually pester you. I've never had as many fucking teeth cleaning sessions since I moved. The cunts want you in there twice a year without fail because they want the money. They've monetized looking after your teeth in America. Uh, you see loads of kids with braces as well, which you never see back home. Braces are quite rare. Like in my school, say one in every 30 kids has got a brace on. Out here, it's like fucking 60% of teenagers have got a mouth like fucking Metal Mickey because they've monetized it. Um, I disagree with that and I'll have to do a video about the NHS one day. Uh, I disagree with incentivizing dentists and doctors to do procedures on you. Um, but that's what they've done in America. So it's true. British people do have bad teeth in general. And that's why stereotypes are a thing. If you just make one up, if I was to just turn around and say, Americans have bad teeth, the Irish like playing chess, it wouldn't, they wouldn't take off, would they? Because people go, that's ridiculous, it doesn't make sense. The reason stereotypes exist is because a slightly higher percentage of those people do those things, right? And it's politically incorrect to say it, but it's fucking true. Not all Irish people are massive pissheads, but fucking loads of them are. <laughs> this is known. Not all British people have got bad teeth, but fucking loads of them do. And not all Americans are fat knackers. But you walk down a street in the fucking United States and you see fucking heffalumps. I don't even know what the word would be for it. It's like fat people in England a merely fat but when you see fat people out here they are fucking documentary fat they are let's make a tv show about this fucker because he is such a staggering sack of redundant protoplasm and cholesterol that we have to put him on television so where do you think the stereotype of fat americans comes from it's not like we we haven't seen brad pitt with his shirt off there's millions, tens of millions of Americans that are fucking buff and athletic. But guess what? There's also tens of millions that have a physique like a puss's sleeping bag filled with fucking jello. They exist for a reason. Fucking hell, that was a quite a long tirade about stereotypes. Anyway, you get the point. They're a thing. Karen, definitely a thing. Not all, but some. And that's all you need for a stereotype. So the reason I felt the need to defend Karen today was because I was in the gym. I wish I'd took a photo of my local gym. I forgot to do it. Uh, I didn't think of making a video about it. But um, it's way worse than this one. Um, I, I got the 24 hour fitness near my house in Pasadena and it's every third machine. So I, this photo here, it's worse than that. It's like the girl with the pink shirt on, she wouldn't be one machine away from this guy in the black, she's two machines away from him. That's how much they've overdone it, where in the gym I go to. Um, and there's there's this nice cross trainer that I like to go on for 20 minutes, and there's only three of them. So instead of having like the first and the third available and the middle one sectioned off, the middle one is the only one you can use, and the one on the left and the one on the right are both sectioned off. And it really fucking annoyed me. So anyways, I got on it started working out after about five minutes this woman comes over with a fucking mask on a proper one as well not just like a fucking cloth one like this type of shit and she comes over and she's like oh um you're after work out with your mask on and bear in mind i had to sign up for a time went to come to the gym log in and wear a mask upon entering the building i assumed that when you got to the machine you could actually take your mask off 
So I'm there working out without my mask on, and this fucking bird comes over and says, "Sir, put your mask on. You have to put that on." Like she was almost panicking, like there was a look on her eyes, like as if I'd just got my balls out in the middle of the fucking free weights area. <laughs> like she was shocked. <laughs> and I was like, "What?" And she was like, "Look a panic in her eyes, you know." Sir, sir, put your mask on. You have to wear your mask. And I was like, "You've the 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 gaps between the machines are massive. Do I do I still have to wear one while I work out?" And she went, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And I was like, "Okay, okay." Put my mask on and carried on. I was like, "For fuck's sake." This is shit. So as I was working out, sweating into this fucking mask, it was annoying me. I just wear like a bandana that I got issued rather than an N95 mask or something. But it was uncomfortable and, I, and I'd worked out for half an hour and I thought, you know what, it's a bit shit this. I was going to do like a four miler on the treadmill or something. And then I thought, you know what, fuck it. I think I'll just leave and I'll go run around the streets rather than do it with a fucking mask on. But as I was leaving, I thought to myself, you know what, I sort of understand where Karen's coming from here. And I'll explain why. You guys probably remember that I, about a month or two, I mean, I've made several videos about the coronavirus and you know my thoughts on it. I think it's bollocks. It's needlessly overdone. A quarantine should only ever be put on the people that are sick and not the people that are not sick. It was overbearing and it should have been more targeted. Again, the Swedish model works fine for me. Keep all the old people in. The high-risk people, the morbidly obese, the diabetics, they stay in and everybody else gets on with their lives. If you get the everyone under the age of 45 out and about in the bars and the clubs and the titty bars, guess what? That's how you get herd immunity. Because all those people get barely affected by it. And then once you get past like 60% of the population's being infected, it, it stops the virus dead in its tracks. And nobody dies when you're that age. If you're not morbidly obese or fucking diabetic or something and you're under the age of about 50, you've got nothing to worry about. The numbers have proved this, and we kick the arse out of it. So that's why I don't support this. I think they were too strict with it. But anyway, enough of that shit. I'm already bored of talking about it. The point I'm getting at is, the science is in, and we know that the two metres rule was overblown. There was no need for a two metre rule. I've done a video about it. They admitted there was no need for a two metre rule and the government said something along the lines of a metre is more than long enough but we don't want to um, we don't want to take any risks and the general public are thick and they don't really know what one metre is so fuck it, let's just make it two metres. <laughs> it was that ridiculous. The World Health Organisation recommended a minimum, minimum of one metre and the government advisor said he was told the UK doubled it just to be on the safe side. <laughs> right, you remember the video where I said it was like being in the military where they tell you to be outside the armory at six o'clock and then every single chain of command that goes down adds fucking ten minutes to be on the safe side and the next thing you stood there at fucking half past four in the morning. That's what they did. And uh, if you look at all the other countries, look, you've got like the UK and the US, we've got the two metre rule. Germans have got 1.5. The Swedes and Norwegians have got a metre. Like, that is flimsy science. You don't need to be that far away virus spores and fucking saliva that it's not like night crawler and it fucking teleports into people's bloodstreams if you're not close to someone they're, they're fine and we have an immune system fuck me they don't seem to really know what they're fucking talking about and they can't decide on a good safety distance but if you're gonna start doing over six feet apart, and they have done that in the gym that I got. What the fuck do they need to instigate masks as well as the distance? It's it's doubling everything or tripling everything to be on the safe side. You don't need a fucking mask. By the way, I apologise for the noise today. Fucking, I don't know what's going on outside my apartment, but it sounds like the fucking Alamo's kicking off again. Like 6,000 Celtic tribesmen have descended upon fucking Hadrian's Wall and they're trying to dismantle the cunt. Anyway, if you're already keeping everyone fucking eight feet apart or something by cordoning off 80% of the machines in the gym, do I really need to wear a face mask while I'm exercising as well? Like, not only am I miles away from everyone, I also have to wear a fucking respirator while I'm on a fucking treadmill. It doesn't make sense. It's fucking ridiculous. So, this brings me to Karen. I thought to myself, I almost had a big argument with the girl who's having a go at me. And as I always do, I thought to myself, no, no, wind your fucking neck in. There's no need to have a go at her. She's just instigating the rules that the fucking management have badly passed down to them. And nobody really knows what the fuck's going on. The government doesn't know what the fuck's going on. The health experts don't know what the fuck's going on. I can't expect some fucking minimum wage cunt in 24-hour fitness to know what's going on, can I? 
So I wound my neck in, shut the fuck up and left. But I thought to myself, if you're a sort of well-educated, middle-class arsehole, wouldn't you feel emboldened to sort of argue the case? It's like whenever I go on Twitter, right? Although, <laughs> let's watch this just for shits and giggles. <laughs> There's tolerance for women in Pakistan, but no one will say anything because he's not a fucking white guy. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. It's her fault for dancing. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, it reminded me of this, right? So, some twat wrote racist king BLM on Robert the Bruce's statue, right? Despite the fact Robert the Bruce died <laughs> fucking 800 years ago. Uh, he died in 1329, and I put a quip on there and put the... He died in 1329, which means that the black population of Scotland was 0% and he didn't even know black people existed. Ha ha ha. And then this twat turns up, Daniel Shitcunt, uh, and he fucking starts having a go at me. And like they always do, educated people, they're ideologues. They have the political opinions and they are desperate to make them fit the evidence, not the other way around. You know, Sherlock Holmes' methods about never making your mind up and then looking for evidence to make it fit. That's what people do when they're ideologues. Like I keep saying, nowadays, as soon as I talk to someone, if they say to me, oh yeah, uh, gender is on a spectrum, I know what they think about everything. It's the very definition of an ideologue. I'm not one. You find that more people now who are leaning right or reluctantly voting on the right aren't because I make my mind up about everything on an individual level. I'm now a Trump voter, or I'm going to be. But I disagree with the Republican Party on loads of things. Abortion, euthanasia, drugs, healthcare. There's tons of things that I disagree with them on. Because I'm not an ideologue. Everything to me is on a case-by-case -case basis. But these daft cunts, you just have to name one thing. And I know where they stand on everything. I know Daniel Hawkins, who's arguing the toss, despite the fact he knows for a fact deep down that I'm right and he's wrong. I know what Daniel Hawkins thinks about everything. I know what he thinks about gay marriage. I know what he thinks about climate change. I know what he thinks about abortion. I know what he thinks about gun control, education, healthcare, immigration, everything. An ideologue. So, Daniel Shitcunt here wants to argue the toss about my humorous comment. I said it was more of a quip than a history lesson, son. But seriously, Britain was 99.9% .9 white in 1935 and was as homogenous as Japan until after World War II. What do you think Scotland looked like in the 14th century? The cast of fucking fame? Daniel Hawkins. Quips like that are how white nationals try to propagandise otherwise ignorant, anxious people. <laughs> uh, Scotland was by no means purely white. I said, listen, laddie, you can use weasel words on talk about interaction all you like. The fact remains the country was 99.99% .99 white a mere century ago and therefore spraying racist king on a statue of a man that died in 1329 is absolutely fucking ridiculous. So the first thing he does is denies it was a BLM activist. Yeah, again, denial. It must have been a Trump voter masquerading as a Black Lives Matter activist. <laughs> Uh, and as to this, as to your claim about the racial makeup, where's the sauce? They always want a sauce, and it's like, he must know I'm right. Deep down, he must know I'm right. But the hoping, you'll just lose interest, and then they can go, ha ha, another victory for social justice. So I said, listen, son, you know nothing. Do you think the Scots had slaves under Queen Victoria? Like, what, what do you think? And then out, out it comes. Well, I have a degree in history with a focus on Europe in the Middle Ages. <laughs> so this cunt, after proving that he's a fucking idiot and he is wrong on every level when talking to a soldier that doesn't have a degree in history or a degree in anything, he simply reads a lot of books and sees the world as it is. And the first thing he does is jump into that, right? They love jumping in to the letters behind their names, therefore I win. I said... You've got a history degree with a focus on Europe in the Middle Ages and you don't know that Scotland was racially homogenous a mere hundred years ago. Like, is that what you're saying? And he said, I'd love to see the source. And again, 
I've got, I have the sources. There's fucking dozens of them. You literally just type in racial makeup of the UK and you can fucking find dozens of them. I found a great one on the BBC here and um, it was literally, there was less than 10,000 in the entire UK in like the 18th century. And I don't need to check these things. I just know it because I went to school. But you'll get some fucking kid with a fucking history degree <laughs> with a focus on Europe asking me for proof and again I don't like to play the game I just take the piss out of them at this point he says I'd love to see the source you're drawing from from a hundred years ago and I said haha of course you can find examples there was a moor sold in York in 1687 got that off a BBC article but it became so famous, they reckon he was the only black man ever seen in the city during the entire 17th century. If we wanted a percentage, I'd say my 99.99% was a wee bit low. And then I said in 1772, Lord Mansfield put the number of black people in the country at as many as 15,000. Though modern, cons histi modern historians consider it to be the most likely, 10,000. From a population of 9 million, you do the maths. And then he moves the goalposts. And then I said, you started arguing with me because you said Scotland wasn't 99% white in the 13th century. I said, Scotland's not America and Scots don't have to feel guilty because of Jim Crow, so suck it up. And he finishes with, oh yes, but my worthless American degree, where's your degree? Like, you don't know anything, Daniel. You don't know anything. You've got a head full of cow shit. Nothing you said is right. Which brings me to my point, right? We got there in the end. If you're middle class and you went to a good university back in the day when they actually taught you things, because let me just, I don't want to rag on education, I don't. Because if I was middle class, I wish my dad wasn't a fucking welder and my mum didn't die when I was a bairn and we had some money and they'd sent me to a good university. Because I'd probably be a lot wealthier than I am now. But Modern colleges aren't good for you. Like, you should send your kids to trade school or get an apprenticeship or do something because the figures have been bore out. These fuckers proved it, didn't they? Because have you noticed, Felicity Huffman and the likes, the ones who got the kids into Harvard and all these top colleges by and they didn't do any work and they didn't earn the place and they didn't know anything, none of their kids couldn't get the degree, could they? Have you noticed that? None of them dropped out. None of them failed to do any of the work and get their much vaunted Harvard degree. The hard part is getting into the fucking thing. It's not passing. Clearly, a degree these days is not worth a wank. You can have the fucking IQ of a pull along duck. You can be as light as a fucking candy man's balloon. And you'll still leave with a fucking college degree. And this silly cunt proves it. Because he knows nothing about the history of Europe in the Middle Ages. But that's what his degree is. He knows nothing. They don't teach you anything. If they did, Felicity Huffman's shit for brains daughter would have lasted two weeks and then went, fucking hell, I'm, this is beyond me. But none of it is. And it never is. You don't need to talk to retards like Danny. You just need to be aware of reality. And you know the truth of my words. But my point is this. Karen is arrogant for a reason. Because our society places so much stock in education that if you get a lot of letters after your name, you will always be convinced you are right when you're talking to someone that's on minimum wage. And I just wanted to make this video because I had a bit of a revelation when she was having a go at me with panic in her eyes. I never responded because I'm not a wanker, because I'm working class and I've done shitty jobs on a minimum wage. But I thought to myself, you know what? If I was an entitled middle class woman with a PhD, Let's say I was an epidemiologist that knows fuck all. Like, I don't know, Neil fucking Ferguson, for example. Let's say I was a young, attractive, gobshite woman with an OBE and a load of letters after my names because I went to Oxford University and I know all about mathematical modelling of the COVID-19 pandemic and I know for a fucking fact that the two metre rule is ridiculous and the government really doesn't know what it's doing. But I know all about infections, infectious diseases and I'm well aware that if you're three fucking metres away from someone, you don't need to wear a fucking respirator <laughs> to, 
to stop yourself getting a virus. If that was the case, I think I'd be a Karen. I think I'd have got arrogant from my education. I'd be convinced that I know all the science and all the methodology and all of the myriad ways that bacteria can propagate. And I would say, who is this minimum wage peon to tell me about donning my mask when I know everything and she knows nothing? I can see where she's coming from. So this rambling video is me saying, try to put yourself in the shoes of Karen before you become needlessly aggressive and fucking slam Karen as the biggest cunt on two legs. Just think about it. Is it not conceivable that if you were an entitled middle class woman, and we know they have it better than men nowadays, everyone who's not a fucking maniac knows it. My missus certainly knows it. Most women are sound and they'll admit it. Women get treated with kid gloves. And if I was a middle class, entitled, well-educated woman wanting to go on the treadmill that's fucking four metres away from every other bastard treadmill and some fucker came over and said, put on this big heavy respirator and you can't do the run that you were really looking forward to doing, I think I could be a Karen too. And that is my point, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, being the balanced centrist chap that I am, I'm trying to put myself in the shoes of a Karen and I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe we should cut Karen some slack because I get where Karen's coming from in her naive, needlessly antagonistic manner. Because Karen might read The Guardian, might go to school with Neil Ferguson and might have a load of letters behind her name. But like Mr Hawkins there, could still be a monumental fuckwit. What do you think? Maybe Karen deserves some slack, eh? That's my video for the day, chaps. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for all the kind words about my art as well, by the way. I'll think of some humorous designs for a mug or something and I'll try and set up a store or something because I've had a lot of people um, messaging me about how much they like that's uh, my violent cartoon scribblings. Um, and yeah, so I'll think of something. Appreciate all of the uh, support and the likes and shares, etc. And uh, rest assured, I'll have another give giveaway soon. Maybe I'll um, print up some more Christmas cards or something for Christmas. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.